comets. When we talk about comets, uh, one of the things that we need to talk about is their composition and the parts of a comet. And what we see here is called the nucleus of a comet. And the vast majority of the time, this is all there is to a comet. It's this large lump of rock and ice, sometimes called a dirty snowball. Uh, here we're looking at something maybe 10 miles across, 20 miles across at most, uh, very similar to the asteroids in that respect. So when a comet is far from the sun, this is all you've got. It's only when a comet gets closer to the sun that it starts to develop the other parts. And the first part to develop is called the coma. And essentially it's the heat of the sun vaporizing the ice. So you are getting essentially an atmosphere around that nucleus. Where the nucleus is on the order of miles across, the coma can be quite large. Uh, it can develop a coma as large as Jupiter. A number of years ago there was a comet, Comet Holmes, that had a coma the size of our Sun, which was unprecedented and just insane. So it's this atmosphere around the comet. And the closer it gets to the Sun, of course the more ice you've got, evaporating, so you've got more evaporation, more vaporizing. So you get a bigger coma. So as the comet approaches the Sun, the coma is going to grow. Then as it leaves, it's going to shrink back down again since it's getting away from the heat of the Sun. The other thing that develops as a result of being close to the Sun is the tail. And this is due to the, what's called the solar wind coming off of the Sun. So it is essentially blowing against the comet and causing that gas and dust that's falling off of the nucleus to extend out into a tail behind it. And like the coma, uh, the closer to the Sun you get, the bigger it gets. And that's because the solar wind is going to be stronger when it's closer to the Sun. Because the Sun's solar wind is what's causing the tail to form, it's always going to point away from the Sun. So you have this strange phenomenon that as a comet approaches, the tail is behind it. As it swings around the sun here, it's going to be kind of perpendicular to its direction of motion. And then as it travels outward, the tail is going to lead the comet. But also notice it is getting smaller. Uh, so you have very tiny tail when it's out farther from the sun a much longer tail when it's in close to the Sun, but always pointing away from the Sun. So where do comets come from? A guy named Jan Oort, uh, Jan Oort, uh, back in the 1950s, did some calculations based on the motions of comets, and essentially extrapolated outward backwards in time to see where they came from. And what he found was that there must be this huge reservoir of comet nuclei far, far away from the Sun, out almost one light year. They're still held in the Sun's gravity, but just barely at such large distances. So it doesn't take much to change 
its motion. So one tiny little nudge by a nearby nucleus or a star going by can send it plunging inward towards the sun. And that's when we would see it, when it gets in close to the sun. But because these orbits are so long, uh, it's going to be a long time before you see it again. So this is the source of what's called long period comets. Um, long period, greater than 200 years before we see it again, is considered a long period comet. So sometimes you'll hear about a comet and the next time we'll see this comet will be in 2,427 years. That is most definitely from the Oort cloud and that is most definitely a long period comet. The Kuiper belt is closer to home. As you see here, it's around where Pluto is. Uh, very much like the asteroid belt, but now it's a belt of comet nuclei, again orbiting around the Sun, just like the asteroids do, but composition is different. Where the asteroids were rock and metal, here we're seeing uh, rock and ice. But, like the Oort cloud, uh, they can get bumped out of their orbit and they can end up taking a path in towards the Sun and back out again. And it's when it's in here by the Sun that we're going to see the tail and all of that fun stuff. But, being in closer to the Sun, the time it takes before we see it again is going to be much less. So these are short period comets, so uh, less than 200 years to see one of these again. So, uh, most famous would be Halley's Comet, which comes back every 76 years, roughly. Um, but also notice, this is, here's the orbit of Pluto here, and that Pluto is very much in the Kuiper Belt. That's going to be important when we uh, talk about Pluto. Because comet nuclei are small, they're not easy to see from here on Earth, but as technology's gotten better, uh, we have actually documented Kuiper Belt objects. Uh, so these are sometimes called uh, Kuiper Belt objects, or being lazy, we call them KBOs. And so here we see a graphic showing uh, known Kuiper Belt objects. The reason why there's a gap right here is because these observations were made when Earth was over on this side of the Sun and so we couldn't see through the Sun to those. Uh, but as you can see over a thousand of these have been found in the Kuiper Belt. So a lot of comet nuclei out there. 